and um, I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation of the Bible. And the word says, Then the people began to mumble in disagreement because he had said, I am the bread that come down from heaven. They said, Isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know his father and mother. How can he say, I came down from heaven? But Jesus replied, stop complaining. Look at your neighbor and tell him, stop complaining. Stop complaining. About what I said. For no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them to me. Mm -hmm. And at the last day, I will raise them up. As it is written in scripture, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has ever seen the Father, only I who was sent from God has seen him. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread, which I will offer, so the world may live in my flesh. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I want to talk today from the subject, the bread that satisfies. The bread that satisfies. I was thinking as I was preparing this message, my brothers and sisters, I was thinking about when I was in elementary school and... Um, I remember that there was a portion of time in elementary school where we had something that was called recess. And we would go into the cafeteria and we would eat. And there were some children who did not have, and at that time I have to explain to y'all that we didn't call it sliced bread back then, we called it light bread. And uh, there were some who, who brought light bread or sliced bread and uh, I remember I had a friend that would take the brown part of the, of the bread and put it all off. He wouldn't eat that brown part of the bread. He would throw that in the trash, but he would eat the other white part of the bread. But then there were those who did not have the money or whatever uh, to, to eat sliced bread or light bread. They brought biscuits. Uh, and, uh, and and those of you that have ever had that experience, uh, you know that uh, when you put fried chicken and fried pork chops in, in, in a biscuit and put it in a brown bag without baggage, because they didn't have baggage back then, and uh, by the time lunch came, that bag would be what? Greasy. Greasy. And most of the children that had biscuits, times they were ashamed to pull their lunches and put them up on the table because other children had light bread and they didn't have light bread. They had biscuits. And they were ashamed that they, they had to come to school and, and eat biscuits uh, called, rather than light bread. But you know, it's strange how things have changed now because uh, uh, there, there is a place, I, I guess they're still in business, uh, in Congress and some other place, it's called Red Lobster. Mm -hmm. And they serve something that's called biscuits. Mm -hmm. And people will eat those biscuits. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will wrap them up in a, in a, in a what you call them, in a napkin, mm -hmm. put them in their purse and take them home because they keep bringing them out. And if you're not very careful, my brothers and sisters, uh, you will eat all of that bread and next thing you know, you'll be fooled and by the time the meal get there, uh, you won't want anything to eat. Mm -hmm. 
I had worked with a young lady uh, once, and uh, she used to be a waitress at uh, Ryan's. Y'all remember Ryan's Steakhouse? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she said they were taught um, to, because it was a buffet, and they were taught to keep pouring water in your glass and tea in your glass. So when it got about half full, they would pour some more water in there, pour some more tea. And the reason why they did that was because of the fact that they didn't want you to eat as much when you went to the buffet. So they would get you filled up with liquid and everything. Now, I don't know, my brothers and sisters, why Jesus used bread as a metaphor to talk about salvation. I don't know why he did that. So what, what is a metaphor? A metaphor is a symbol of something, something that uh, you use to represent something. And, and so what I want to do today is uh, uh, get you to understand that we're using examples to point out uh, the illustration of this message here. And so first thing we see in the text in 41, verses 41 and 42, we see the complaints of the crowd. You see in verse 41, it said the, the people began to murmur in disagreement because of what Jesus had said. When he said that, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Okay? Now, one thing I, I, I've often wondered, do people know when they are grumbling and complaining? I just wonder sometimes, you know, uh, 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 I know y'all don't know anybody, and nobody in here you ever complains, never grumble. You you know you you never do that kind of stuff. So so I wonder when people who are complaining, when they're grumbling, do they really realize that they're complaining or they're grumbling? Now I, I will take another side to that. They'll probably tell you, I'm not complaining, I'm not grumbling. I'm just trying to get my point across. Amen. Huh? Amen. So. Uh, People would do that, and when they grumble uh, and complain about something, they don't normally, when they grumble, they don't normally speak out real loud. They, 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 they just kind of, you know, just kind of murmur, and you know that they, they dissatisfied with whatever was being said and so forth. But, but this is what was happening. Jesus had told him, he said, I am the bread that came from heaven. Now, the reason why they were complaining about it because their ancestors, and they knew the story, they knew the history of their ancestors, and the ancestors had been in the wilderness. Y'all remember that, don't you? The children of Israel had come out of the land of Egypt, and, and when they got into the wilderness, they had to have something to eat, and therefore God sent manna from heaven, all right? So, so that's what they said. They knew that came uh, from from, from, from heaven and everything. In, in verse 42 they said, Isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? Don't we know who his mother is? Don't we know who his daddy is? Mm -hmm. So you know, sometimes people will label you and put you in a situation based on the family that you came from. Mm -hmm. Now, if your family was a bunch of cussers and fighters and, and stirred up stuff all the time, and, and uh, people would just associate you with being that kind of person. On the other hand, if your family was nice and, and, and uh, real uh, respectable in the community, when you didn't do what your family did, then they would think, why are you so different? You and your family is a nice family. Why why you don't uh, uh, be nice and, 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 and so forth? But But this we see here is the fact that they couldn't understand how Jesus could be saying the things that he was saying because they knew his mama and they knew his dad. But the problem was they didn't understand how Jesus came into this world. Jesus didn't have an earthly father. His father was from heaven, but they didn't understand what had happened because of the fact that the Old Testament had prophesied and told them how Jesus was going to come, but they didn't understand it. So they complaining and grumbling here because Jesus said he came from heaven and the bread that he would give would come 
from heaven. So as we look on at this text, as I said just a minute ago, they didn't understand the birth of Jesus. They didn't understand where it came from and, 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 and all of that because they're trying to label him and, you know, just being an earthly being. And how can you dare say that you came from heaven and what you're going to give us came from heaven and all of that and, uh, and, and, and so forth. So sometimes an idea might be great, but what we find out is that sometimes the idea is great, but whoever brought up the idea, it'll make a difference in whether or not it's going to be successful. Now, when you, you get into a group of people and you try to get an organization or whatever to do something, sometimes somebody within that organization will come up with an idea. But depending on who came up with the idea, sometimes people will not want to follow or do what the project is going to be about because they don't like the person that brought up the idea. Now, I have difficulty in understanding when we get to the church where there are people in the church. All of us are on the same road. We're trying to get to heaven. We're, in, we're trying to get people into the kingdom. Why we can't get along when we're trying to do something? But that's what happened in organizations. It happened in your neighborhood. It happens in church. People just sometimes do not find that there is a good match. And you know, I like to try to use the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, symbolism here of Ike and Tina Turner. There's sometimes you have some people you can't put together to work because they'll be like Ike and Tina Turner. They'll be fighting. Amen? Amen. But look at the, the call to faith in verses 43 through 45. He said, but Jesus replied, what did he tell them to do? What did he say in verse 43? What did he tell them to do? He said, do what now? He said, stop complaining. Stop grumbling. Because what they were grumbling about wasn't worth nothing. He said, now, for no one come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. And at the last day, I will raise them up. All right, so no matter how much we preach, no matter how much we teach the word of God, we don't have the power to draw people to Jesus Christ. Only God can do that. And so what he's saying here is that as the word goes forth, as the word goes out, it will go to people and people will hear the word because faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God and therefore when they hear the word of God, God will change their hearts and cause them to give their life to Christ. Now I know sometimes we do all kind of things to try to get people to come and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior but only God can do that through the Holy Spirit to convince people that they need Jesus. You say that all the time. My cousin talks about this often. He said what the children need at the schools, and he said they need Jesus. I agree they need Jesus. But for some reason or another, they don't seem to be drawn to Jesus. So it has to be the work of the Holy Ghost to draw people to Jesus. We can spend all the time, and we should do all of it, spend the time trying to tell people about who Jesus is and what he preached about. But there has to be a time when God has to do the drawing. Jesus is telling the Jews and us today, we must be drawn to Jesus by God if we are to be raised up in the last day. Now, I don't understand. I don't know y'all. I can't tell y'all when the last day is going to be. But, you know, some of the things that I keep seeing in the scripture, it seems to me that it must be an urgent time because of the fact that these words are trying to get people to come to Jesus Christ. So must be an urgent situation because in the last day, if they have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, I hate to say it this way, but this is the way it's going to be. They're going to burn in hell. Amen. So we must be taught by God. We must learn and hear 
through Jesus Christ. Yes. No one has seen God. Only Jesus has seen God. Y'all remember the time that Moses kind of wanted to see God and, and he told him to do something and all this stuff, but he didn't actually see him. You know, like I'm looking at y'all and y'all looking at me. He didn't see him that way. In other words, he got to know him in a way where he it was like he saw him. Now, you may have seen some people on TV and they act certain ways and you think that that person is a certain way, but all they're doing is acting and what have you. You think you know him or her, okay? We must believe in who? Jesus. I don't care what nobody else preach. It is all about Jesus. If you want to get raised up in the last day, you got to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and God has raised him from the dead. That's the only way you're going to get in. So I don't care what the other folks say. I don't care about these other denominations, other religions and what have you. If they're not talking about Jesus being the Savior, then you are in the wrong place. All right? So... We have to believe that Jesus is the bread of life. Now, as I said earlier, I don't know why Jesus used this metaphor of bread, but this is what he used to describe what he's trying to tell the people. In other words, if you want to live eternally, you got to partake of him. Another than we ain't, we ain't talking about we got to eat Jesus physically or nothing like that. But you got to believe in him. You got to believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. That's what you got to believe. Let's look at verse 45. It says here, as it is written in the scripture, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listened to the father and learns from him comes to me. So in other words, when you understand the word of God, when you hear the word of God, when you learn what the word of God is saying, you find yourself coming to Jesus. Now, I know there are different circumstances that sometimes that, that cause people to, uh, to come to Jesus. Maybe there's a death in your family. Maybe there's a sickness in your life. Or maybe it was something that, that happened that drew you. But the word of God is what draws us. And if we learn the word of God, because here I'm going to say this again, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. All right, so let's look at verses 46 uh, and 47. The assurance of belief. He said, not that anyone has ever seen the Father, only I. In other words, Jesus said, I'm the only person who's ever seen the Father. He said, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. So in that simple, even though we try to make it complicated, it's all based on the fact that we got to believe in Jesus Christ. What do we have to believe, Sam? We have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We got to believe that he died for our sin. We got to believe that he rose up from the dead. And not only that, y'all, but he's coming back after a while. Amen. And I, you know, I, I want to be ready when he comes back. All right? Then it goes on in verses 48 through 51. The true bread from heaven. Now notice what he said here in verse 49. He says, your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. But they did what? Die. They died. Die. Now, when I first looked at that, literally I kind of had a problem with that because I'm thinking, you know, did they not get an opportunity to have salvation? Because he's saying here that they ate manna because they prayed and and God sent manna down from heaven and they ate it, you know, different times of day and they were supposed to eat it all up and, and all that. But Jesus said, because you know what? They, these Jews right here are trying to tell Jesus that we want the same thing 
that our ancestors got. We want that manna, not the bread you're talking about. We want manna that comes down from, from heaven just like our ancestors did. And, and Jesus is telling them, say, your ancestors got the bread from uh, manna from heaven, but they still died. Mm -hmm. Now, what he's talking about is they died a physical death. And so what he's telling us that if we believe in him, we may still have a physical death, but we have eternal life. And that's what it's all about. We want to live eternally with Jesus Christ. So as we look at this, he says that anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. All right? And that does not mean physical death. It means that you will live eternally with Jesus Christ. All right? You're going to get out of this earth some way or another. Either you're going to fly out of here or you're going to die a natural death and, and what have you. Now, you know, one of the things that, 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 that I often think about, and maybe I'll spend too much time thinking about this, but when I think about every person that Jesus ever raised from the dead or healed, they eventually died. They died sometime. Okay. Can I prove it to you? Anybody seen Lazarus lately? <laughs> huh? Anybody seen J.R.'s his daughter? Have y'all called her? Have you texted her? Have you texted Lazarus? No. They go. They died a physical death. And we got to understand that we didn't come here to live forever. But when we, while we're here, we need to be making preparations to get out of here. Amen. The other day, Friday I believe it was, my grandson was getting ready to go back to college. And I, and I called my daughter to say, have y'all got on the road yet? She said, no. She said, they still packing. So I'm saying packing, they all had that stuff packed days ago. They knew they were going today, so why they had to wait? She, and so she explained to me they were packing stuff in the car, okay? So what I'm saying is we don't know when Jesus is going to come. We don't know where we're going to be. We don't know what time he's going to come. So therefore, we need to be ready when he comes. Amen. All right, let's suppose that you're going to take a trip. All right? I don't know where you're going. Maybe you're going to go to um, Chicago. Okay? Now, some of y'all might be afraid to fly. So, you might want to take a bus. You're not driving. Okay, let me make that plain. You're not driving. You're going you, you, to go on a bus or you're going to go on a plane. Now, if you didn't know what time the plane was leaving, if you didn't know what time the bus was leaving, how would you like just go to the airport and just wait until they call the flight to go to Chicago or you just go to the bus station and say, well, I don't know when the bus is coming, but I'm just going to sit here till the bus is, is coming. You would have a real problem with that, right? But in effect, that's where we are right now. We need to be packed up. We need to be ready to go whenever the Lord comes. And no matter where we are, when it's our time to leave here, we need to be ready. Because what Jesus is saying, if you accept this bread, this bread of mine, what I'm talking about, it came from heaven. In other words, it's eternal bread. It's life-changing bread. It will make a difference in your life. And so what he's saying also, that once you accept him, you will become satisfied. And you know, like I said earlier, if you eat a whole bunch of uh, uh, that bread that come from uh, Golden Corral or, or, or Longhorns and all that, you'll sit down, you'll eat all of that, and you'll get full, and you won't want nothing else to eat. So what we are saying here is that when once Jesus fills you up. You don't want no other God. You don't want no other Savior. 
All you want is to have Jesus in your life. Yes, there might be some ups and downs. Yes, there might be some disappointment. Yes, there might be some uh, 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 some pains and suffering. But when you got Jesus, I heard the old song old folk used to say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Pick me up. Turn me around. I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm happy today to know that I've got a Savior. I believe in him. Y'all can believe in him. I hope you do. Uh, uh, but I believe in him. And I'm not going to let anybody tell me no, that i got to take on another Savior. Because Jesus. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Jesus.
Is there one today, even in here? Is there one? All I have to offer you, I don't have no silver, I don't have no gold. I offer Christ to you. That's all I can offer. Don't have no money to give you, no clothes, no house, no car. But all I can do is introduce you to a man who will save your soul. And his name is Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, since none have come, as the Old Testament says, Jacob shall not lose his reward if Israel fail to obey. Let's give the Lord another hand cup of praise. Amen. Amen. <laughs> At this time, we will allow you an opportunity to give. And if you're online, you can give through Givelify. You can give through Zale. Or you can mail us a check to Church of New Beginnings. 3150 Highway 20 South, Conyers, Georgia, 30013. Or you can use one of the online apps. If you're in here today, you can write a check and give it as you leave out. Or you can also use Zale or you can use Givelify. Amen. But whatever God allows you to give, we thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for your gifts. And we appreciate you more than you know. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we thank the worship team for getting us kicked off this morning and giving praise unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know whether um, uh, any of you uh, had to Call up verse 26 in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, this past week. But there was some in some points during the week I had to call on that verse because I didn't feel peaceful. Amen. Amen. But in verse 24 of uh, Numbers chapter 26, it said, May the Lord bless you and protect you. Amen. May the Lord smile on you. And be gracious to you. Now here's the first 26. May the Lord show you his favor. Yes, favor. And give you peace. Amen. amen. I, I love that word favor. Because I, I, I don't know exactly how that's going to come. You know. Uh, it may come in, in terms of some doors being opened. It may come in terms of somebody blessing me with some money or, or whatever the case is. So I don't specify how I want the favor to come. I just said, Lord, give me favor. Amen. And he will do that. And then I turn around and ask the Lord to give me peace. And I want peace that surpasses all understanding. I want you to have a great afternoon, great evening, and I want you to continue to pray for our country, our state, Amen. our city, our counties. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our children in school. Pray for all the teachers, the faculty, the staff, the bus drivers, everybody that's involved. Pray for them daily. Pray for our law enforcement people. And everything. Just pray that God will continue to show his blessings and his mercy upon this earth. And I don't know what's going to happen. I, I'm not a prophet. I can't tell y'all I know what's going to happen in the next few days and what have you. But I know one thing. That if you've been saved, you got Jesus. And no matter what the situation is. Always remember that Jesus is with you. Amen. Jesus is there to guide you and to comfort you, even in the midst of whatever problems or trouble you have. Trust Jesus. Yes. Yes. Believe in him. And again, I want to thank each and every one of you. I, I, I want to give some a shout out to our intercessory team. And pray every Monday through Friday Amen. at noon. Amen. Thank y'all for what you do. And I know that you're seeing results. You're seeing, seeing people uh, get blessed and things change for people's <laughs> lives and stuff. And I appreciate it. We can feel your prayers and everything. So just keep on trusting in the Lord. He has given us 
everything that we need. Yeah. Let me just say this, and I'm going to try to get out of here. There is a denomination of people that teach something, and I don't talk about this often, but it's talked about the finished work. When Jesus went to the cross, when Jesus died and was buried and he was and he rose on the third day, that was kind of the finished work because he did everything he came here to do. And all we got to do is believe that he did what he did and believe what he said because he said he was going to come back and he was going to come and get you. Now, when you, when you were a child, and your parents went off to school. I mean, off to work, not school. Went off to work. You believed that they were going to come back home after they got off from work. Sometimes some parents did not make it back home. But the children believed that they were going to come back. But I want to tell you that Jesus is coming back. Somebody said real soon. Right. I don't know how how quick real soon is. But all I'm trying to do every Sunday is to get you to believe in Jesus Christ no matter what you're going through, no matter what your family's going through, no matter what your children are doing, your husband, wife doing, or whatever. You just got to believe in him and remind him. Amen. Amen. I had heard a preacher this morning before we came to church. And um, he was talking about Rachel and Leah. And y'all know that Rachel was a beautiful woman. And the Bible really doesn't say this, but it, it kind of indicates that <laughs> Leah was an ugly woman. <laughs> So what he, what he said was reminding me, for every Rachel, there's going to be a Leah. Amen. For every Rachel, there's going to be a Leah. So that's like saying, for every success, there might be a failure. Amen. So we can't get too pumped up. When we succeed. Now, I didn't watch much of the Olympics. I know y'all probably did and everything. And some of them won, some of them didn't. Some of them were crying because they didn't win and all that. But even in your failures, I know somebody who promised us. He said, I won't forsake you. I won't leave you. Even in your failures, I'm still right there with you. Amen. Everybody standing. Father, we thank you for this day. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Lord, we just want to magnify your name. And as Deacon Hudson was playing earlier, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm glad today that Jesus lifted me. And Father, as we prepare to leave this place and go to our several destinations, Lord, we ask that you will comfort us, show us favor, protect us on the highways, protect us in our homes, protect us on our jobs, protect us wherever we go, God. Protect us in our churches, oh God. And Father, we'll be so careful to give you the praise and give you the glory. We thank you, O oh God, that you allowed us to see this day, O oh God. And Father, we give you the praise, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.